Right now, we're in the Land Between the Lakes National Recreation Area in Kentucky. This is the largest inland peninsula in the United States, and this place is absolutely wild. It used to be settled by hundreds of families who were kicked off to build the National Recreation Area. Now, as wild as this place is, what's even wilder about it is the stories that have come out of here. That's what brought us here last summer. Are those claw marks inside it? It was a howl. Yes, it was a very loud owl. Right next to a cemetery. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm not summer prepared. solstice. I'm not prepared for that. I... Okay, you're not prepared for that? <laughs> well, we're here, buddy. Last summer, we came to investigate the story of the beast of LBL. So allegedly, in 1982, there was a family that came to the LBL with their RV to go camping, and they were all viciously murdered by an upright, werewolf dog man like creature so the reason we came here is to see if there's any validity to that story when we came we got an amazing thermal image that looked like exactly how people describe a giant werewolf would look and while, while we didn't really know what to make of it we knew that we had to come back but we wanted to come back at the time of year that the massacre supposedly had taken place it's so quiet there's nobody here and it's just wildlife around us. We wanted to try a scent experiment. So in the original story, the family apparently had some sort of cologne on and it caught on the wind and went down through the woods and it brought in the beast. So we're trying a scent experiment here where we're using different pheromones. One is a human ape hybrid pheromone and one is a wolf lore pheromone. And we're doing a combination of those to see if we can draw in any kind of dog man activity. So I'm gonna take you guys to our little sites where we've set up these scent traps. And I wanna show you how we've set these up to hopefully capture some kind of photographic evidence of the dog man. hiking through the woods and we found an abandoned tent and some gear and effects strewn about. Um, I'm going to take you to that site right now and we put up a scent experiment trap right there. So um, I just want to kind of show you some of the stuff that we stumble across in the woods that kind of adds to why I really believe these things exist and these things are taking people. So I found the campsite exactly like this. I have not altered it or changed it in any way. This is exactly what I found. And we are way, way back in the woods. Now this is a wildlife management area during some parts of the year. So there will be hunters that come back here and camp, but deer season has been over for a while now. And this tent has been here only for a few weeks because there was a tornado that came through just recently. When we came upon this tent, this is how we found it. We have not touched it or altered it in any way. If you come over here, you can see the door has been ripped open on the tent. Next to where the tent was found, something that really, 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 really scared me was these. 
These gouges in this tree here, these are not from an ax. These are not, these look like claw marks. If you look here, it looks like something with a large claw grabbed into this tree. There are also marks here that go in a horizontal direction. Right by where we found this tent. Now there's no evidence that there was a murder here. There's no blood, there's none of that. But it's awfully strange that the door was ripped open on a tent. The back was ripped open. This person's effects are strewn about in the woods and this person is completely gone. So this is where I decided to set up a scent experiment. So here's what we did with the scent experiment. We set this up yesterday. Right now, we have a pheromone chip that contains ape and human pheromones. Down below, we put down wolf lore, which is a wolf pheromone. When they did the DNA experiment, allegedly, on the dog man from the land between the lakes. The DNA came back primate, human, and canine. That's why I chose to combine these scents in a lore station that maybe would draw something into this area. Directly across from this, I've set up a game cam on this tree that gets triggered with any kind of motion. And it's gonna capture video and photos. So, when I set these stations up, I set them up and I leave them for a few days. And if it rains really hard, I'll come back and rebate the pheromone stations. But in a couple of days, we're gonna check the SD card on this and see if anything came in and we got any photographic evidence of the Land Between the Lakes beast. We baited this area last night uh, because it seems like in these areas where there's a lot of ruins from old houses or old settlements that these things seem to gather there. In this area, I found a lot of bones just scattered about from various animals. So something is obviously coming over here and feeding. So I figured this would be a nice little spot to set up another scent trap. This one was with wolf lore. So we didn't do the ape human pheromone chip. We just did the wolf lore here. And we're gonna kind of keep that as, as a variety. So we're gonna see what maybe draws something in, what doesn't. So we do these experiments on a rolling basis just to see what happens with different kind of factors. So I'm gonna run in here. Uh, I'm gonna hike through here and grab my game cam. I'm gonna check what's on there right now. Go ahead and erase it if there's nothing there and leave the cam for another couple of days. What's really cool if you explore these deeper areas of the Appalachian Mountains is that you'll find things like this. This is a foundation of a house. Now this isn't something from the 1800s. This is just something from the 1950s, 1960s. The land between the lakes was taken by the TVA around 1966. So everybody that lived in the land between the lakes was taken out of their homes and moved elsewhere. So everything kind of rotted in place. So we had some pretty intense storms over the past few days. Tornadoes came through last night, but as you can see, our game cams are still intact. So we're gonna go ahead and check what's on these. Got a little something here. I think it's a, it's just a small mammal, it looks like. That's fine, that happens. Oh, we get some night footage. Okay. Don't see anything here. Could have just been triggered by the wind shaking a tree. Yep, that's what it looks like. And these will go off. These are pretty sensitive, so they'll go off if the wind shakes the tree or anything like that. You just erase those. But it's always good to leave these here for a little while because sometimes you get lucky and you catch a little something. Okay, that's it. So there's nothing on here, 
But we are gonna leave this here for another few days. Uh, we're gonna refresh the lure that we put out because it did rain last night. Um, so we're gonna refresh that, leave these out for another couple of days and see if we can get anything else. But this is something that you keep doing on a rolling basis. Um, you just have to keep observing the area and keep diligent with putting these out and seeing if you can catch any kind of anomalous activity. We followed the trace and explored some of its countless winding offshoots, scouting new areas deeper into the peninsula that we could further investigate in search of evidence there are still unknown beasts lurking the forests of the LBL. Seemingly desperate to keep its secrets, this strange and wild land threw us yet another curveball. Boy, the weather has not been kind to us here in the LBL. Uh, at this point, we have dodged thunderstorms, tornadoes, and now we are bundled up because it is below freezing and it is, if you listen, that is sleet hitting the leaves. So. It is sleeting on us now. For all the jelly about the freeze, you better burrow down. All right, I ended it. All right. Okay. Back up, and we're gonna oh. grab the oh. other one. All right, so the GoPros are absolutely soaked right now. It is freezing, it is pouring sleet. We are retrieving our game cams. We're gonna move them to another area. But right now we've gotta get out of this area before this ice keeps coming down. Um, but we're gonna try another area as soon as this clears up. The weather took a bad turn on us, which seems to be the story of the week but I'm actually here all right let's roll we're going to try to get over the bridge before it ices otherwise we're going to be stuck here so there's a winter storm warning um in effect for the area they had a thing that went out it was like an emergency warning saying that if you are out right now in a vehicle if you're out right now in a vehicle to make sure that you have extra water extra food because uh, you may get stranded in your vehicle so I guess this is going to be pretty bad what is that rumbling do you hear it we walk down there and look and we'll yeah walk we'll in. go check it out um Okay, so uh, right now I am firing up the Garmin InReach Mini. I'm gonna mark where we are parked and send that to the folks at home. And I always do this, no matter what we do, where we go, I always use the Garmin InReach Mini to mark our location and mark where we are. Right now we are in the cemetery that is adjacent to the area that is the site of the supposed massacre that occurred in the early 80s in the land between the lakes. We are going to hike on in and uh, check it out and see how it is today. We've been back and forth through here for the past couple of days. And then in the surrounding area, we've been kind of circling around and going to different areas around here. And we've gotten a lot of very interesting evidence. Um, last night, we had a pretty bad ice storm and had to get out of the LBL. Prior to that, we had a really bad tornado. So this has just been a very, very strange week in the land between the lakes. It has just been one weather event after another. So you can see that we have snow still on the ground and ice still on the ground from the ice storm last night. And it's sort of melting, it's still cold, but uh, that's not gonna keep us out of the woods today. So we're gonna head on down and uh, we're gonna check out and see if all of this wet weather has created any kind of mud and if anything's passed through and created any sort of footprints. After we found that footprint, after uh, before that tornado, we, we are hoping we find something similar. Um, we find more tracks similar to that. 
uh, because that was a really, really crazy track. So we're headed back to the bunker site right now and it is freezing. It is so cold right now. So we are gonna be sniffling the whole time. And of course I'm freezing. I am freezing on a hot day. So that was our message going through to the folks back home. Uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of snow and ice still on the ground. So it is, and it is still kind of coming down. The rain's coming down still a little bit. Hang on one second. Let's get you, get you cleared up there. Let's get you cleaned up. Is that clear? Is that good? There you are, Peter. All right, let's do this. You've got a weird thumb. Yeah. In the distance that we thought it was an airplane at first, but it sounds like it's down by the lakeside. Do you want to hike down there? Yeah, we'll hike down to there. So we're going to hike down to the lake and uh, see if we can figure out what this weird hum is. It's been going on. It was going on yesterday and last night before we left, we could hear it. So we're going to go down there and check it out and see if it's down by the lakeside. Hold on the chest cam. We found about a size 13. It was bigger than my foot. About a size 13 print down here that was kind of oddly shaped but it had six thin lines radiating out of where the toes are and it looked like it didn't look like bear claws it didn't look like canine or feline prints um that looked kind of like a malformed human footprint with six claws on it because yeah. there's mud galore today oh yeah it is muddy Everything's kind of defrosting a little bit. We have ice still everywhere. It is soaking down here. Like I said, this has just been one weird weather event after another for us. 68 thunderstorms and tornadoes one day, 28 nice storms the next. Yeah. So. <sighs> this place has taken a beating in the past few months. I mean a beating. It's not very maintained anyway. Um, they're getting budget cut after budget cut. They don't really have a lot of people on staff. Uh, so the land between the lakes is starting to be in dire straits if you wanna be honest about it. We can figure out what this hum is. Yeah. It's not a. It's not someone running a generator. It's not a plane. It doesn't sound like an engine idling. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of like a weird, ominous hum. I'm gonna. I don't think we're gonna be able to get it with these GoPros because the mics aren't the best. So down here's that gravel road where we got that thermal edge. Yeah. Um, Do you remember that pad over there? Or was it too grown up last time over here? I don't remember. Bunkers that. are over there. Yeah. We didn't see this last time we no, were here. No, that's... Nope, never seen that before ever. There's another one right over there. Yeah, there is. Um, oh, this is, there's one over here, or is that a log over there? This is definitely one of those pads. Now this one is, looks like it's got rebar sticking out of the corners. This is a big intact one. This, those are floor tiles. Is there floor tile underneath it? Yeah. 
remnants of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are floor tiles. All right, so we've got another concrete pad here, or a cinder block pad. Right. This one has remnants of floor tiles. And then we got another hole. Oh, great. There's piping coming out of it, hose. Yep. All right, so. Yeah. Things are sprinkled all over the place up through here, and this is just what? 200 yards from the supposed massacre site. Yeah. So the whole, all the whole, this whole end of the peninsula is just dotted with these little cinder block and concrete structures that we don't know what they're. Yeah, about. and they're all very yeah. similar in construction and size. Yeah. Um, the the pad that we were looking at over over yonder is a similar size to this one. The one yeah. intact pad over yonder is the same approximate dimensions as this one. But now this is the first one we've seen. This is the first like with hose or pipe in it. Like drain box or whatever. Yeah. With yeah. hose in it. Yeah. I don't know. That's the thing. There's so much information that's missing. There's just so much information that's missing. We're just trying to piece it all together well, one on. little bit at a time. Before we run off, let's look over through here. Check it. What you got? What do you think I got? Heel. Toes. That is the same. About the same size. Same size as the one we saw before, but the ground is all, it's all leaf through here. Yeah. Can you get that on your camera? Are you seeing where the, the water's pulling up it's in the shape of a foot? It's hard to tell what I can get on my camera. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So heel mark up through, toes, big toe, the inner side of the foot. Damn, it's down pretty deep. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. It's much bigger than my size 12. When we first came here, we were just gonna check the area around the bunkers out, just as kind of a sightseeing thing, just because it factored so much in the lore. I mean, you can see tire marks over here. People come four-wheeling back through here. There's garbage strewn around. People come back through here. We didn't really expect to find anything, but now this isn't that far from where we got the thermal image. I mean, that's just right, what, a couple hundred yards down that way. One really good, one uh, kind of print we found up through here. It's just weird, I didn't really expect to find anything here. And this is where we found the most stuff in the LBL so far. Uh, you wanna go check that other area out? Sure. We were gonna go down to the lake, but we decided we're gonna go to that area where we've been finding all kinds of stuff that's recent. I feel like we've walked the alleged massacre site to death at this point. We've been up and down, up and down, up and down. We've... Yeah, but we found a lot of stuff that nobody's ever mentioned before. Yeah, we have. I mean, on, on this trip and the last, we found a lot of stuff that's never been mentioned before. But we do have some things leading us in a, into a different area that could be something more recent. I just can't tell. Look at this. See? I keep finding these indentations that are all roughly the same size. Yeah, and the same shape. Yeah. But they're not leading in one particular direction. They're going everywhere up through here. Yeah. What is it about this area that is drawing them in? There's far more remote areas on the LBL. Yeah. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now what my working theory is. You tell me whether you agree or disagree. All right outside of two or three areas in the LBL where most of the people congregate at. Yeah. For the most part, this place is deserted most of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. When people do come into it, they're doing extremely disruptive, loud activities, like taking their four-wheelers back yeah. onto old country roads, drinking, they're being very loud, and they're not paying attention. Right. I think these things run with impunity through here. Probably. I think these, I mean, I'm just, I'm going from looking at our thermal image and going, I don't know what that is. I don't uh -huh. have an answer, but it looks like what witnesses have said. These footprints are making me, are starting to turn me into a believer. Yeah. Sierra, we found yeah. that pair of inside out pants. And the boot. <laughs> and the boot. Um, so. What's weird is we had just listened to a David Polites yeah, 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 yeah. On the way up. I was uh, uh, Bubba and yeah, 
Bubba and whatever the guy's name the is. The other guy. Yeah. But he anyway, several times the the fact that boots are often found because they don't they don't degrade in the elements as quickly as clothing does. Yeah. So if you find boots out in the woods or a rifle or something, then there's probably a missing hunter somewhere. <laughs> and we just listened to that interview on the way up here. Um, so it was really, really crazy that we came out here, that we came out here and find this uh, boot. So, God, it's so wild how much stuff is just back in these woods that used to be like commercial buildings and houses and all this stuff. All right, so here's the pants again. Um, it's just weird, you know? And then the boots over here. There's some more stuff down here. I'm all, I'm gonna walk into the woods here a little bit. Let's see what's down here. Just trying to see if maybe that other boot got dragged down here into this little ravine. It's weird that there's just one boot. Somebody's lost a boot and their pants. Have they lost their foot and their legs? We don't know. It's a little weird. Um, this whole place is weird, to be honest with you. Every time we come up here, it's like we scratch another layer off, but we'll never get to the, we'll never get down to it, down to what's really going on, I don't think. Down here at the at the beach, I hear something moving through the leaves up here. It's like walking through the forest. Directly ahead of us. Yeah. Let's move towards it. Oh, oh Jesus! I don't see it. It's leaping towards it. Gotta be quiet. We gotta listen for it. It's kind of in that direction over there. All right. What did you see? What did you see? Left or right? Left or right. Fucking ran through here. Yeah, I couldn't. There's no way that anything ran through here. Look at this. How tall was it? What did you see? I don't know. I didn't have a. I only saw it for a split second. I didn't have a chance to get a gauge of the height. And then anyway, this is sunken in, and it's lower than we were. It was still up enough on my peripheral vision to be even with us. It wasn't a tree because it was moving fast. It's getting darker. Yeah, we're losing light early. What? You see in that? Punch forward, head down, long arms, like this, but with long arms. Is that yeah, what you saw? Yeah, that's what I saw. Fast? Fast. The arms swing, like, swing like that. Slope shoulders, like you, shoulders hanging down, yes. but like kind of hunched? Yes, that's what I saw. That's what Body, I saw. Like an angle like this, though, but the head kind of. Yes, but the arm was long and yeah. hanging down. That's what I saw. And it was dark, like real. Spooky. Yeah. Real dark. That's what I, that's what I saw. You That's saw how I... it jumped, right? 
You saw yes, me jump? Yes, I saw you jump. That's what I saw over there. <sighs> that's what's out here. You know that's what's out here. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's a freaking dog man. I'll tell you that right now. I don't think it's a dog man at all. Yeah, that's exactly what I saw. I saw the arms like were like this, but they were super long. Yeah. That's what I saw. I don't think, I don't think this is a dog man thing. I'm so gonna like tell you that. like a shifter or something like that, man. Yeah. Well, you know what six toes are? That opens up a whole nother kettle of fish. There's six toes on that print we got. There's six claw marks. Well, you want to tell me what the kettle of fish is? Goliath in the Bible had six fingers and toes. It's Nephilim stuff, man. The Nephilim are supposed to have double rows of teeth and six fingers and six toes. Sixteen feet away. Sixteen feet away from you. All right. And uh, teams are thirty-two, thirty-four. 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 Thirty-two,
you hear? Like a scream. We need to come back here at night. Yep. All right, so this is on our, tonight's night investigation is gonna surround this. Yeah. On the other side of that ravine. It's gonna be foggy tonight. This is definitely on our list for the night investigation for tonight. We've been trying to hit different areas as we go through up and down the peninsula and picking out different areas to go and investigate. So we're gonna take a little drive because the rain's kicking back up. Uh, we had about we had about an hour or two of no rain. Now it's kicking back up. So we're gonna take a drive down the peninsula. Watch out for that ditch. Uh, we're gonna take a drive down the peninsula and uh, an old man stopped and talked to us about some tornado damage down one of the roads that go to one of the bays. So we are gonna head down there and uh, try to check that out. I wanna see some of this damage, some more of this tornado damage. That's just, I don't know, everything we're finding, all the activity just seems to be centered around the northern portion of the peninsula yeah you would think it would be more towards the, the more remote center part but everything just seems to be up through here you know yeah and it's it seems like it's it's weirder and weirder the more we walk around the woods up here and it's so weird because this is the northern part is closer to the entrance to the park and all yeah. of that you would think there would be more people and more activity and um, human activity and that these things would be driven more towards the middle, but that's just not the case. Unless we haven't st stumbled across that section in the middle yet. I mean, there's a lot of the area that we haven't seen yet yeah. through here. We're gonna try to go into the area where we found those ripped up pants and then the boots. I got an eerie feeling about tonight. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I just have a... I haven't had this feeling the whole time we were here. No, I haven't either. Um, just it feels, it's very unnerving for sure. It's... Honestly, if every night felt like this, I don't think we would do what we, do I wouldn't want to yeah I mean yeah usually we're on edge and it's frightening sometimes but this is like an unpleasant feeling tonight yeah yeah it's very nerve-wracking um, yeah I don't I don't it feels like we're on the precipice of something happening um, we're just waiting for the other shoe to drop for something here yeah I don't, I don't feel good about tonight 
I don't either. Uh, like I said, that's the best way to sum it up is that if every night felt like this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this. This area is much different after the sun goes down. All right, so this is the area that we found the torn up clothing, torn up pants that were pulled inside out, and then the boots. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like to our eyes. Joe killed your light. I'm gonna kill the night vision right now. Okay. You ready? Okay. Hello, this is with night vision. This, this is exactly what we see. See, I have my flashlight here. So, no tricks. This is exactly what we see. Point over here. So this is with my flashlight. Here, that's... With flashlight? That and nothing. Yep. So... This is how dark it is in these woods right now. Yeah, it's pitch black back here. Yeah, it is pitch black. losing focus with this camera. I don't know what's going on with it. Yeah. This camera's usually very reliable. What is that? Are you what? seeing that? What am I? Yeah. It's in the woods. There's lights in the woods. Wait, are there two? Wait, what is that? Should you just see a red one to the left of it? Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to get those. I don't know what we're looking at here. Winter because my my hands lose feeling after just a few minutes. Yeah. I keep getting flashes of light in the woods. White light in that direction? Yeah. Yeah, so I saw one from right here over here. Moving around us. Yeah, no. right. I'm telling you, something is out here. Yeah. I am so jumpy right now. Yeah. Um. You would think that we've been here for over a week. You would think that we'd be used to this place right now. I don't think you ever get used to this place. Yeah. I don't think anybody could ever get used to this place. What are you saying?
saw a light in the woods. Yeah, it's been an all night thing. That was not a coyote. No. That was not a coyote. This camera keeps going out of focus. Try not to talk so much, okay? Huh? Try not to talk so much. Terrifying. What the hell is that? I hope we got it on camera. That sounded like a person like wailing in pain. Digital audio recorder. Friday, February 25th, 8:24 p.m. Be quiet. What are you doing? Right now, in the woods, we are hearing what sounds like a singing. Um, we heard a scream. We heard a howl. We're trying to get some of this on the thermal. We're not really seeing anything on the thermal yet. I've got a ball of heat just floating in the air. What? It's not a bat, it's not a bird. It's just a ball of heat. What? Scan around, see what else I see. Something's moving through over here. Where? Oh, that's right, I saw that. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Do you hear the singing? Yeah.
Do you hear the screaming? Yeah. Joe saw a large, dark figure over here during the day, like in the middle of the day. Now we're hearing what sounds like singing and crying from the woods. We are out here in the middle of nowhere. There is nobody out here. There's nobody else out here. We've driven all over this area. There is nobody out here for this. And we are hearing this. It is absolutely terrifying out here. <laughs>